Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this video, I hope you're doing great. Um, as we get started with this next section of geometry, we are transitioning from polygons and the area of polygons to circles and looking at lengths and areas of circles. And, and we're not so much going to get into lengths or areas, either of those components today, but we're going to familiarize ourselves with some of the degrees within a circle. And so uh, I need you to know and understand uh, these first terms here. And so as we look at the very first one, uh, key terms, a circle, you, you maybe think I know what a circle is, but what is it as a definition? And the definition of a circle is the set of all points equidistant from a given point. Okay, remember equidistant means equal distance. So as we look at, you know, just a general definition, if you have a given point, a given point here, you know, if there are a set of all points that are, ooh, that's a bit. okay, and all of those points, if it's a circle, it's going to be the same distance from that center point. All points that are equidistant from that center point. Uh, the center of the circle is, I'll just say, the given point. Um, and, and you can refer to the previous one, the given point that all other points are equidistant from, I guess is a good way to finish it up. Okay, um, that's a very wordy way of saying the center of the circle. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, the radius, uh, the length or distance, length slash distance from the center to a point on the circle. Okay, hopefully we all know and can identify the radius and, and then what's coming up, the eventual diameter down there at number five. Uh, but uh, I'm going to test you on that to make sure you, you guys got that down. And so those should be easy points. Uh, skipping down to the diameter is the uh, length slash distance. From one point on a circle to another point on the circle passing through the center. Okay. So, uh, yeah, again, all these terms should be uh, fairly familiar. Uh, the next two actually are probably newer terms or newer concepts. Uh, but this first one, number four, should not be hard. You remember when we talked about congruent triangles, we talked about how there had to be side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg. But again, remember, no angle, side, side, right? Okay. Well, congruent circles just need one simple characteristic to be in common in order to make them congruent circles, and that is that they have to have congruent radii. Okay, congruent radii. If that distance from that center point to any point in the circle is the same, those circles have to be the same measure. They are congruent to each other. Uh, the central angle is any angle formed from the center of the circle. I should say that's formed with the vertex. at the center of the circle. Okay, 
And so just making sure you have a visual of this, if you have any circle, okay, there's the center. If I go ahead and form, you know, central angle, right? Okay, it comes from the center, central angle. All right, now, from there, we're going to take a look at a couple of concepts here that I want to make sure that you uh, understand and, and can uh, think through. Uh, the first one being this, uh, if you have a pie chart, and I know that we don't have to do this so much these days. If you've worked in Excel, I don't know if you guys have done a whole lot of work in Excel, you can plug in numbers and then ask it to form the pie chart for you. But, but the reality is, is, is how did that happen? Where did that come from? How do we know that this is 33.7% over here, 33.7% of the whole circle, okay? And so really the question that we're asking is, is what's the measure of that central angle there? How do we know that to be true? You know, you know how graphs and, and charts can be very misleading. Uh, we're going into a, um, it's not this next year, but next year, the following year, 2016, is when um, we'll be electing a new president. And they're always showing you charts that are misconstrued to, to basically make themselves look better. And so uh, if we want to double check this to make sure that this chart isn't showing a bigger portion of the other or a smaller portion of the carrots, than what it is, how can we do that? It says determine the central angle for the following sections of the pie chart. And so what I'm going to do is ask you this. If, if this sector, which is what a piece of the pie is going to be, if this sector is 11.9% of the entire portion of the circle, how do we figure out the measure of the angle there? Well, if you think about it, how many degrees are being covered when we do one rotation there within the circle or the pie chart? Right, 360 degrees. And so if this is 11.9%, we're basically saying, what is 11.9%? Remember, we move it two decimal places there to change it to a decimal. Uh, of, meaning multiplication, 360 degrees. Okay, what is 11.9% of 360 degrees? And if I work that out, now as I look up at it, it looks close to a, a 45 degree angle, maybe a little bit less. So let's see here, 0 0.119 times 360 gives you 42.84 degrees. Wow, that was a pretty good guess. And I think the chart looks pretty accurate there. I mean, I said close to... 42 or 45 degrees, so that, that's pretty good there. Okay, I'd like you to go ahead and see if you can do corn and potatoes, and then uh, yeah, pause it right now. Go ahead and do that, and then come back and see if you can figure out if you did it correctly. All right, so corn 15.1 percent, a little bit more than green beans, so moving the decimal two places. If we plug that into our calculator, okay, looks like we have 54.36 degrees, okay. Really the, the sectors of these two, uh, when they're only off by 4% isn't a whole lot, so there's not much variance there. Uh, the potatoes, the reason I wanted to do the potatoes, I wanted to make sure that you were moving your decimal two places here. So, if I do that, move it two places, I should have 0.088 times 360. And if we work that out, we have 31.68 degrees. Okay, 32 degrees. Um, yeah, that's how you figure out the measures of the central angles there. So if you ever had to construct a pie chart on your own and you had the percentages and you had a protractor, you could go ahead and do that. All right, now, some more terminology. I realize we went through uh, terms up above, but really those terms weren't that new, okay? Uh, these terms are going to be a little bit newer. Uh, the first one being a semicircle. I hope everyone understands that a semicircle is half a circle. And so, as we look here, a semicircle I'm going to put is equal to 180 degrees. Why 180 degrees? Because it's half a circle, right? And then how do I identify it? If you look down here at the bottom, you, you see that this, they're, they're trying to show you that this is a semicircle, 180 degrees. But what they're also trying to show you is that in order to identify a semicircle, you need three points. 
If I just said TS, are we referring to the top arc or the bottom arc? We don't know, okay? But what if I add a third point, TRS, oh, now we're referring to the top arc. And that makes it a lot easier to, to uh, focus in and know which arc we're referring to. So what I want you to know about the semicircle is that uh, the identification is going to be three points, okay? And, and if you need to make a little note to yourself to bring attention to it, arc TRS, and please make an arc symbol. Don't make a line. I try to be a little bit artistic there so I can differentiate. Did they try to say line segment TRS or? No, no, no. It's arc TRS, okay? A minor arc, as you would expect, is going to be less than 180 degrees. If you look down here, RS is a minor arc. TR is a minor arc, okay? And so it's less than 180 degrees, obviously greater than zero degrees. And the identification of the minor arc is going to be two points, all right? And if you want to write it down, RS would be a good example. Again, notice how I do my arc. And then TR would be another example. Okay. The major arc, uh, well, we've got one equal to, less than, obviously going to be greater than 180 degrees. Now, it's going to be less than 360. We're not going to cover any arcs that are going to be greater than 360 degrees this year in geometry. And so the identification of this, we look down here, RTS is a major arc. Now, if we start at R, you go to T and then to S. It's not that you go to from R to T and then to S, okay? Go from R to T to S, starting here, moving in that direction, ending right there, okay? And so with the identification, it will be three points just like the semicircle, and we can use RTS as a major arc. You could also say, it's the same thing to say STR. Those arcs are the exact same. Um, if I were to go, I guess there's no other way to state another major arc in that circle there, is it? Yeah. So uh, those are some terms that you need to know. Now, adjacent arcs, I hope that you remember from earlier on this year when we talked about adjacent angles, meaning angle, angles that are next to each other, they share a common side and a common vertex, but no common interior points. For the adjacent arcs, they're going to share one common point on the arc, okay? So I'm going to say this, two arcs that are next to, key, key terminology right there, next to each other, and share only one point. So an example of adjacent arcs would be something like this. Arc TR and arc RS would be adjacent arcs. TR and RS are adjacent to each other because they have one common interior point. Um, if I was to name another pair of adjacent arcs, I could say, um, well, if I was to put RST, Q down here like that, I could say something like that, like this, SUT, arc SUT, and arc RT would be adjacent to each other, okay? And so they don't have to be just minor arcs. They could be major arcs. It could be a semicircle and a minor, all right? But as long as they share just one common point and they're next to each other, that makes them uh, adjacent arcs. They're not inside each other, they're next to each other. All right, now, what I'd like you to do is flip over to the back side of your worksheet, and I'd like you to work through the terminology that we have here. Um, you're either going to identify parts as a minor, major, minor arc, major arc, semicircle, uh, radius, or diameter. Okay, so pause your computer and see if you can do that, numbers one through six, identifying those uh, things.
All right, so if you identified it correctly, CP, hope you said, was a radius, okay? Distance from the center to a point in the circle. AB, diameter, again, terminology that you've had over the last three or four years. Uh, AC, notice only two points, so it has to be a minor arc. Does it look like a minor arc? It is less than 180 degrees. I'm gonna go with minor arc, okay? Uh, CB, is CB less than 180 degrees? It is, it's less than half a circle. So it is also a minor arc. Okay. Uh, CAB, now this is where, a little bit more confusing here. With three points, it's either gonna be a semicircle or a major arc. Well, if I look here, CAB, obviously greater than half a circle. So this one is gonna be a major arc. Okay, and then for BCA, BCA, that's a half circle. This one is a semicircle. Okay, so again, not, not very hard terminology. Hopefully uh, that hit home as far as what, uh, what I expect to see on, on that section there. Uh, don't, don't get any of those terms wrong. Those are simple terms. All right, looking at the next section here. I want you to identify uh, some arcs for me. Now, I will tell you this. You may have different answers than what I'm going to put up here on the board. This is just an exercise to make sure that, uh, that you understand what's going on. So take a moment, pause, see if you can identify two major arcs, two mi minor arcs, two semicircles, two adjacent arcs, and two congruent uh, arcs, and then we will talk from there. All right, now, as far as minor arcs concerned, there are a lot up here. You could say arc EF or FE. Now, again, as I write this up here, make sure you use your arc symbol, okay? So, again, EF or FE, ED or DE. You could say DF or FD. Uh, you could say BD or DB. You could say BE or EB. Again, I'm trying to give you all the possibilities of all of these here. Um, you could say AB or BA. Uh, you could say AD or DA. You could say AF or FA. Um, and I think that's about it right there. So I tried to work my way around the circle. If you had any two of what I just said, and I said it kind of fast, so you might want to rewind it and make sure you had two of those down there. Um, any of those would be possible. Major arcs. Um, Again, this has to be greater than half a circle, so, and it's got to be three points. So if I were to say FEA or AEF, that would work. Now you may be sitting there thinking, well, I had that same arc, but I didn't label it the same way. You could say arc FDA and arc ADF. That's the same thing as FAE and AEF, okay? Or you could say FBA or ABF. Those all are the exact same arcs uh, that I referred to with the first one. Um, another major arc you could go ahead and say is, let's say, AFD. Okay, AFD. Uh, you could say AED. Those would all be possible. You could say AFB or BFA. You could also say AEB or BEA. Uh, you could say ADE, or A, I'm sorry, I said that wrong, ADB or BDA. So again, I'm, I'm getting a little long-winded here with how to identify these, but I'll just put a couple of them up there. If I was to go from point B, I could say something like this, BFD, okay? Now, if you would, take your pencil and, and, or your finger and just trace along that, that arc BFD on the screen there. Uh, what I hope you would see is this right there. That's the arc I'm referring to. It's important that when I say an arc, you know which arc I'm talking about. Um, if I was to give another one, um, let's say EAD. Take a moment and run your finger along that arc as well. EAD. Now I hope that you ran your finger along this arc right here. Okay? So that, that's what I'm trying to get out of this section. Uh, semicircles. Well, I see two diameters. I see this one here and this one here. And so as a result, uh, the two diameters, FAB, 
or BAF, I'll say FAB, semicircle fab. And then the other one is this one right here, which I could say AFE as my other uh, semicircle, AFE or EFA. Uh, Jason arcs, I would say something like this. Uh, if I were to go FE and ED, those would be two easy ones. You notice here that they have the common vertex. Actually, I shouldn't say that because we're just talking about arcs. They just have one common point right there. Okay, so it's here and then here. Um, those are adjacent arcs. They're next to each other with one common point involved. Um, let me ask this question to you. Are these two arcs adjacent to each other? If I was to say arc DA and arc AB, are those two arcs adjacent to each other? Again, DA and AB. Now, hopefully, I mean, obviously, they just have one point in common right there, all right, DA and AB. But the problem is, is that this one is inside of the other one. So I guess you could say, since it's inside, there's multiple points along that arc that are actually contained within the other one, and they would not be adjacent to each other, OK? It's got to be next to. You notice that this is the only one that's shared between those two. So, uh, congruent arcs. Now, with congruent arcs, let me let me clear this off so we can see this a little better. I would be interested to hear what you guys put down for congruent arcs. But what I would be looking for is this: um, if you put EF and AB. as congruent arcs, you're exactly right, okay? If you put arc ED and DA as congruent arcs, you're exactly right. Now, here's what you're actually discovering. Actually, there's one more. Let me see. Um, FA and where's the other one? BE, okay? What you just discovered is the most important part of this lesson, and that's this. It's what's going to carry us into what we're going to be talking about uh, on Monday here, and that's this. This arc and this arc over here, EF and AB, are congruent. Why? Because their central angles have the exact same measures. They are, do you remember the term? Vertical to each other. Those are vertical angles. And so as a result, what I need you to understand is this, that whatever the measure of this angle is, the measure of this arc is going to be the exact same. That whatever the measure of this angle is, the measure of this arc is going to be the same, which is why they're going to be congruent to each other. Okay? Now, you may be wondering, how are the other ones congruent to each other? Well, if we look here, um, this is a 90 degree angle here. So I know that ED is 90 degrees. And I also know that DA is 90 degrees because it's a straight line. And if that's 90, then this is 90. So this arc over here is going to be 90 degrees as well. Okay, so that covers that second section right there. And then the last one, if you notice, this arc here, and I have no idea, no idea what, what the measure of that arc is going to be. It could be 120, could be 130, 140, somewhere in that range, the degree of the angle. Um, this angle down here and this angle here are adjacent to each other. There's the straight lines right there. These are adjacent to each other. So as a result, these two arcs that I'm highlighting up there have to be the exact same. So again, we have FA and BE would be the same measure. So key concept right underneath. The measure of an arc is equal to the measure of the central angle. Okay central angle. Now, if that made sense to you, try to do the last section on your own. Okay? Again, remember, the central angle equals the arc measure. And, you know, I'm going to walk through this here in just a second. See if you can pause and figure out the measurements of all the parts that we're asking for up there. Okay. So in this first part, you have the central angle is 32 degrees. I know that BC is going to be 32 degrees. 
You know, and, and that kind of takes me back to what we did at the very beginning of the year when I said, given the diagram with all these angles involved in it, the first thing I would do is figure out all the angle measurements before I start looking over here at all this stuff over here. Okay, I'm not even going to look at that until I've got this whole diagram filled out. So that's what I'll do here real quickly. If that's 58, I know that this is also 58. All right, 180 minus 58 is going to give me 122. Okay, um, and if that's 122, then this is 122. 180 minus 32 is going to give me what's left over. So this will be 148. Okay, and if that's 148, then this is 148. Now I'm ready to go. I've got everything filled out. I can just plug it in and, and figure out what the answers are. So BC, 32 degrees. BD, well, I'm going to take BC plus CD. So we have 80, 90 degrees there. All right, and I can even go ahead and show that. 90 degree symbol there. Um, ABC, now that's either a semicircle or a major arc. So ABC, that is a semicircle. Well, that's simple, 180 degrees. I should also be able to take 148 plus 32, uh, and that does equal 180. So either way there. Uh, AB is a minor arc. Okay, and we've already found that one to be 148 degrees. And if you want to make a little note to yourself to show some work, that's what we did to get that. Okay. Uh, COD. Well, we know that these are equal to each other, so we can say 58 degrees. Okay. CDA. Well, again, major arc or semicircle. That's a semicircle, so 180 degrees. AD. Uh, let's see here. AD is 122. And again, I got that by taking 180 minus 58. Okay. And then to find BAD, now that's a major arc from here all the way around over here. You can do that one of two ways. You can take 148 plus 122, which is completely fine. Or, think about it, you could take 360 minus 32 minus 58 which we know is already 90. So this difference, 360 minus 90 is 270. Let's see if I get that here. Um, so 22 and 48. Oh, hold on. Yeah, good. 48 and 2 would make 50 plus 20 would be 70. So this would be 270, good. Had a little brain fart there for a second, thought I may have done some miscalculations. That's the hard thing about doing some calculations and talking it out um, when there's nobody in here uh, to assist you with anything. It's like I make a mistake and I go on, well now I'm either ruining the entire video or everybody's going to see the mistake. So anyways, uh, I hope that was understandable. You can go ahead and show the sub your, your notes, filled out notes, and then you can get started on your, your homework for for Monday. So I uh, hope to see all you guys on Monday. Good night.